I'm going to build a hyper do, which is an expanded dodecahedron. I'm going to build this mathematical structure with the zone tools kit. This is a buckyball that I made with zone tools, a kit that allows me to make geodesic type structures. A buckyball, of course, is a form of carbon. Those black hubs are carbon molecules. And I can make other kinds of crystalline structures using zone tools. These are um, periodic type um, crystals, including um, something that might even be described as a, as a diamond. Um, they can be legitimate imitations of the real structures or you can kind of play around and make your own structures up. Things like this diamond itself, all made with zone tools. So I'm about to use this kit here, these pieces, to make a hyper dough, which is a very complicated um, dodecahedron, which um, is really kind of a four-dimensional thing that's showing uh, shadows of various platonic structures. It's very complicated, lots of parts. And it's possible with this same set that can make um, an ice crystal or other um, natural elements and they're a lot of fun you can reuse them I often just make models that I like to hang um, they're not cheap but like Legos they should last forever in terms of reuse um, they're very very firm and sturdy plastic um, and they're called zone works and you can look at their site and see all the different kind of structures you can make and remake at the center of the structure is a 12-sided pentagon, a dodecahedron, in blue struts. And surrounding it will be various layers of flattened dodecahedrons that will make a shadow of different mathematical structures around it. The basic form of this shape is the pentagon, and everything will rest upon the pentagon. There are two ways to make these simple pentagons. Um, there, is, there actually only is one way, but just two ways to orient it. Th this one is flipped over, so what we have is the struts here have an angle, and they all slant inward, as if this was a funnel. But I can turn this over, and now the struts are coming up towards a cone. And the difference is that... Um, there's a slightly different arrangement of the spaces on these balls and you can do different things with them so that in this next part we're going to have we want to have the orientation that we're going to build so that these are funneling down that these are slanted down and that's the orientation that we want to use one way to ensure the correct orientation is to use the long yellow struts to sort of make a cone we're going to take that pentagon and we're going to take 12 of them to make the dodecahedron. Um, and we can use these long yellow struts to ensure that we get the right shape for at least the first one. We won't be using those yellow ones in the final structure. We'll be removing them, but they serve as a scaffolding for the interim. Is you take one of these balls and you take the yellow struts, there's two lengths of yellow struts. There are the short yellow ones and the longer yellow ones. So you take all the longer yellow ones and you put them around one ball until you fill all the little triangular slots with the yellow struts so you have this sort of um, radiation of all the yellow. Then you begin to add blue struts into a pentagon shape on each side. And I'm going to finish doing that. And when we're done, we'll have 
all of these pentagons around a central white hub with long yellow spikes. This is the final dodecahedron with the 12 pentagons on each side. And what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the inner scaffolding of the yellow struts. And you could build this on your own if you wanted to without the yellow one. Next, we're going to make what are called the fat red cells, which are flattened dodecahedrons. When we're making up this crown here, you want to make sure you have it in the right orientation. So these are sort of slanting in. There's a little bit of a um, cup, whereas these are slanting out this way. You want these um, yellow things to be kind of parallel to this surface of the strut. Okay, otherwise it doesn't really work. This, and we're gonna go all the way around. We've added this to make a kind of a flattened pentagon. It's not quite in the right proportion, so it's a little bit squished here, and we're gonna finish that all the way around. Okay, so now we have the beginnings of this um, squished, flattened pentagon shape, and we'll continue on the top of that. So, again, we're going to make some more flattened pentagon shapes here as well. We're going to finish that with this. To have this flattened version of that. It's a little bit more flattened. Okay, so, as you can see, this one is a little bit flattened compared to that one. And we're going to make we're going to make a bunch of these now. In fact, we don't even need that top pentagon. So when we get this far, we can stop because we're going to be applying this to these like this. And so we won't need that top pentagon. We're just going to leave the cage looking like this and we're going to make 12 of these. 12 of these like this. Okay, so there we have uh, 12 sets of these, which we're going to um, start to assemble um, into our larger tohecadidron. Into, um, so we're gonna take this, we're gonna add it to our basic shape here and we're going to add all 12 of these as best we can somehow or other okay and when we add these we actually don't even need to add this last space here we're going to slip this off to put it on um, but it's just easier to make these first and then slip this off right before we put it on so this face here we aren't going to use because it's already here. So we'll just slip these off. And then it goes like this. This is the finished structure with all the fat red cells added to it. And now we're going to add the yellow cells to it. The yellow cells are also flattened dodecahedrons. Just a little tri pod. And we're going to flip over this way. And then we're going to add on it 
these so that there's um, three and then from the ones that are connected to the red struts there's only yellow coming off of those and then there's blue between them again these make a pentagon but they're not a completely symmetrical pentagon they're again a little squished so a little squished pentacle around a tripod three axis that's the next step here so this then we take we're going to add we're going to use these little tiny red struts for the first time and we're going to put them here and again we're going to make another pentagon but this one is very very flattened it's very thin we'll, we'll extend the same thing on top of here again so these are pentagons but we're squishing and flattening the pentagon so here this is really the same thing as this. You can see these fit on. So we are actually going to take, not make them all this full shape. We're going to actually only make half of the shape and then put it onto this part of the structure. So we only, really only have to make basically half of this and we're going to put it onto here. So we'll slip these off and in the future ones we'll only make this part of it. So once that's on, then you can see now we have, again, that same structure, another flattened dohecadedron. Now I just have to do 11 more of them. Next, we're going to add what the instructions called thin red cells. So I only, I only made about half of these in this configuration, half of the half. But even these I'm finding uh, I don't need all of. Once I have about half of these up, the rest of these are going to be filling in. So I'm only making this much of them. And then filling out. So these I don't need. I can use these ones. I only have to add a couple of hubs right here and the rest of these I can reuse. So this is sufficient to pre-make. So you can see the pattern here. We've been adding these flattened dodecahedrons around here and they're forming kind of a yellow ring and we have one, two more to do on this axis. So each of these pentagons will have a yellow ring of flattened dodecahedron around them. So we need to do one here, two there. This one needs one, one. So you can kind of see that. Um, and we're just going to be adding these pieces around here until if each one of these blue pentagons is surrounded by a yellow ring of flattened dodecahedrons. You can kind of see I have the circle of yellow around this blue pentagon, which means I've completed that one. And also you notice that these have beautiful shapes as you turn this thing. So I just have to couple more to finish. I have this one to put in and a few others to um, finish that. The final pieces that we're adding are the flat blue cells. The basic shape of this part is a pentagon and the orientation of this pentagon is going to be looking as if it was a funnel shaping up and we're going to add these small red struts around each of the um, corners and then it's kind of obvious where it fits into the structure there's a hole um, and we're going to shift the pentagon a little offset off kilter with the pentagon below it and you can see that it will form a kind of a tunnel uh, inside the when you put the flat um, blue cell on and we it'll sit right inside that yellow circle. 
So here's the final um, model. You can kind of see some really cool symmetries. They're stacking um, layers as well. Oops, this thing is um, from afar. You can kind of see how things go. It looks really cool. Your kit may be different, but these are the items that I had left over the extras. This scaffolding piece, none of the longer yellow struts are used at all in the model. I have an extra red strut and I have these um, seven extra hub balls, which um, don't seem to be used at all. Your kit may be different. I'm not sure if they're all the same, but that's the extra that I had when I finished the model. So here's the final Hyperdough hanging in my office. I really like it. It's really beautiful. It took about four to five hours to assemble and links to the kit below.